God delights in children. He takes great pleasure in them. They're one of the greatest gifts that he gives to husbands and wives. Psalm 127, 3 proclaims that sons are a heritage from the Lord and children a reward from him. Because children are a gift from the Lord, it's natural that Christian parents present and dedicate their children back to him. In the gospel, we read the story of parents bringing their children to Jesus to ask him to bless them. I can imagine that moment. Wouldn't it be neat to take your child and physically have Jesus lay his hands on the child? And that's what we're doing today, is asking Jesus to lay his hands on our babies. In that very same way, these parents today bring their children. They present themselves first to the Lord and make a commitment, and then they present their child before the Lord. Accompanying them and making this commitment are grandparents and other relatives, and in some cases, I think the baby's siblings may be witnessing this as well. So let's introduce our families to you this morning. If all of our families would come and stand. We go youngest to oldest. Not mom's dad, but babies. This is Caleb Thomas Wright. He is the son, let me get on the other side. He is the son of Daniel and Laura Wright. He has a sister, Sarah, and a brother, Joshua. This is Griffin Barnes Barksdale. Barksdale. He's the son of Wright and Katie Barksdale. He has a brother, Tut, and a sister, Kate. This is Riley Jane Davis. She's the daughter of Matt and Brooke Davis, and this is the first of many. (laughs) I don't know if y'all could see Brooke's expression. (laughs) This is Eve Grace Henderson. It's a prophecy, by the way. I just thought it's a prophecy. It says Eve Grace Henderson. She's the daughter of Miles and Alicia Henderson, and she has a brother, Talon. This is Alice Elizabeth Etheridge. Yes, ma'am. You looked up when I said your name. She's the daughter of David and Georgia Etheridge. She is David and Georgia's first child. One of many to come. (laughs) Nope. This is Chandler Caroline Washburn. Chandler is the daughter of Bo and Lacey Washburn. And Chandler has a big sister, Parker, which if you come to church, you've met Parker. And this is Raylan Jade Brooks. She is the daughter of Chandler and Megan Brooks. Raylan is Chandler and Megan's first child. So y'all may want to applaud for all of these. (laughs) Ah, how beautiful. Parents, I call your attention to the commands of God recorded in the Scripture. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7 tells us, as here, old Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk to them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Years ago, there was a music group by the name of Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Most of y'all probably don't remember that. They had a song that said, teach your children well. There's no higher calling for parents than to do that. Proverbs 10.1 reminds us that a wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son grief to his mother. The best things moms and dads can teach their children is the fear of the Lord. For Proverbs 1.7 tells us that this is the beginning of knowledge. In other words, the successful application of all these children, all that these children learn in life depends on them first learning to fear and follow God. So the church urges you parents to love God with every ounce and fiber of your being and teach your children to do exactly the same thing. As you love God and love one another and love any other children that you may have, you will model before these little ones a wonderful love for God, a love that they will want to have for themselves. So parents... By coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your child to the Lord? If you do, please respond by saying, we do. 
Having come freely, I ask now that you enter into the following commitment in the presence of God and his people. All right, what I'd like to ask now is, Daddy, would you hold your child? Because God puts Daddy as the head of the family. I'm trying to get out of the way so y'all can see. So that these children may walk. <laughs> I got nothing to do with that, man. You know, just, maybe you can get close to her. There you go. Well, put your hand on her or something. There you go. So that these children may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Mom and dad, do you vow by God's help and in partnership with the church to provide your child with a Christian home of love and peace, to raise your child in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline, and to encourage your child to one day trust Jesus Christ as his or her Savior and Lord? If you do, say we do. All right. For encouragement and fulfilling these vows, parents call upon grandparents and other relatives. Proverbs 17.6 declares how grandchildren are the crown of the aged. <laughs> I think of some of you grandparents, and I don't know if you'd go with the aged part of it, but that's cool. There's great pride in seeing a new generation of family and how that joy is reinforced when children are raised to fear God. So to that end, I ask all grandparents and all relatives of these families to stand and I ask you to answer the following questions. Come on. Let's, there you go. By coming forward before God and these people, do you hereby declare your desire to help these parents to fulfill the vow they have just made before God? If you do, please answer, we do. And having come freely, I ask now that you enter into the following commitment, so that these children may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow, as parents, grandparents, and relatives, by God's help to pray for and encourage these parents in their effort to raise these little ones in the fear of the Lord so that these children might receive our Lord's guidance and instruction? If you do, say, we do. And now I ask the church for you to make a vow, if you would all stand as the body of Christ. We have a res responsibility as the body of Christ to teach gospel, the gospel story to our youngest generation. In fact, in the Old Testament, the prophet Joel commands us to tell God's work to your children and to let your children tell it to their children and their children tell it to their children. So I direct my questions now to you, congregation. Being present in God's house today, do you hereby declare yourselves to be children of God because you trust in Jesus alone for the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of eternal life? I'm asking you this morning to make a faith statement. If this is true for you, will you say, we do? Amen. Having come freely, I ask now that you make the following commitment before God and those who stand before you, so that these precious gifts of God may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow by God's help to be faithful in your calling as members of the body of Christ, to help these parents be faithful to God, and to help teach and train these children in the ways of the Lord so that these children might one day trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? It's a big responsibility, church. If you will make that commitment to these families, please say we do. I'd like to ask our deacons to come forward, uh, the ones that have, have, we've talked to, to come forward and lay your hands on these families. If we have more than we need, deacons, just go ahead and put hands on them too. It don't hurt. The more the merrier. Each of the moms and dads have been thinking hard about this moment. We've asked each couple to write out their hopes and dreams for all these precious babies, have counted all these precious babies for each of the weeks, the 936 weeks between now and the time that they're 18 years old. With that in mind, as we pray in a moment, I ask dad, as the spiritual head of the family, to hold your child or place your hand on your child. 
And mom, place your hand on the child. If there are little ones standing with the family, I would ask them to place their hand on the child as well. And I'm asking one of our deacons to stand behind each one of the families and lay hands on both the mother and the father as representatives of the commitment that First Baptist is making to these families. Let's pray together. Father, the future seems so uncertain. And yet we look at these children and we can't do anything but feel hope. We know you will guide their feet. We know that you will make their path straight and give them strength. As people who love our children so much, Lord, please anoint us with an overwhelming peace that you love our children even more than we do. And you want to see even more goodness for them than we could want for them ourselves. Father, be strongly present in their lives. When they're lonely, remind them that you are God, you are the God who is forever present. When they are sick, remind them that you are the God who heals. When they feel defeated, remind them that you are our victory. If they are ever needy or poor, remind them that you are our provider. If they ever feel lost, hopeless, or without purpose, remind them that you are the Lord, our good shepherd. We give these, our little lambs, Father, our children to you. And Father, there's so many things these parents want for their children. Lord, please honor the godly requests. Teach the children to pray to you. Teach them to believe in you as their Savior and to stand firm in that belief regardless of what winds might blow. Teach them how to be godly men and women who live the fruits of the Spirit in their lives. Even now, Father, it's as hard as it is for the daddies to think about this on Father's Day. Be preparing our children's future husband or wife. Train them to be godly and ready when the time comes for them to meet. Father, help the children to know their parents as a source to come to for wisdom and counsel. Make the children understand that there's truth when the parents whisper into their ears that I will always love you and help us, Father, to remember that it is truth when you whisper into our ear, regardless of where we are and what we've done, that you will always love us. Thank you for your powerful and kind assurance. We love you, Lord. Lord, we love you more than we thought we could, and yet we want to love you even more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Everyone may now be seated.